Hi, you YouTubers. This is Superman G. Come back at you one more again. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I installed a newer dash cam or an upgraded dash cam from what I had before. Uh, the one I had in there before, I had it for about three years. And it was working fine until the other night I was on my way home and there was a possum in the road. And I, he just wasn't moving. And I tried everything I could to avoid him, and I wound up hitting him. So when I got home, I took the SD memory card out of the dash cam and put it in the computer to pull up the footage. But to my surprise, there was no footage. There was no footage at, uh, at all of me in that particular moment where I hit the possum. And I was thinking to myself, now this is very odd, and it's also very unfortunate because what if it had been a car accident where the car or the other party was at fault and they hit me and now i have no footage showing you know even proof showing you know that the other party hit me or what even truly happened and i decided okay i'm getting rid of that and i'm going to get a newer dash cam and i have it i installed it and this is going to be the video showing you pictures and i'm going to narrate what steps I took to install the dash cam. So check it out. Before you install your new dash cam, if you have one that's already attached, you want to remove it. This is the first dash cam I had, which is the Blacksys CH200. And in order to remove it, you have to use a heat gun or a hair dryer. In this case, I used a hair dryer. This is the Thinkware Q800 Pro dash cam. It's a two channel system, which means that it carries signal for both the front and the rear cameras. Inside the box, you will find the front camera as well as the rear camera. There is also this memory card, 32 gigabytes, that comes with the dash cam. Also included in the box is this SD memory card reader. This is something new that BBMC or BlackBoxMyCar.com has added. Before, you had to buy a separate SD memory card reader in order to play back your videos on the computer. This is the cable for the rear camera. It is the longest cable in the box itself due to the fact that the cable has to run from the front all the way to the back of the hatch or the rear window. This is the cable that goes to your cigarette lighter. So if you don't want to hardwire your dash cam, you have the option of just plugging it into the cigarette lighter adapter and it will power on the dash cam, but you will not be able to have parking mode enabled unless you're car has a particular cigarette lighter port where it does remain powered while the car is turned off. These are adhesives for your dash cam and wires or clips. So the bottom one is for your dash cam, the middle one is a extra one if you need it and the top ones are clips for clipping in the wire that you need to run from the dash cam to the power unit whether it's the cigarette lighter or the ODB and also the cable for the rear camera. This is iRoad's OBD cable. This cable connects to the OBD port underneath the dash and then connects to your dash cam. This cable provides power to the dash cam when the vehicle is turned on and it also provides power to the dash cam where it enter parking mode when the vehicle is turned off. One of the first things you want to do before you install your dash cam is pick a location on your window to place the dash cam. You want to try to place it nearly directly behind the rear view mirror but you don't want to place it too closely to it to where you cannot eject or place in the SD memory card. Also, you want to make sure that the window is clean before placing 
the dash cam onto the windshield. Once you've selected a place on your windshield for mounting your dash cam, you're going to take your mounting bracket and attach it to the dash cam. Do not take the 3M sticker off just yet. When you remove the 3M film covering, just take off a corner piece of it and that way you can attach that corner piece to the windshield to make sure that the camera is properly aligned. Now before you mount the dash cam, I suggest going to the App Store or Google Play Store and downloading the Thinkware app. It has a built-in feature that can help you align the camera to the exact center of the windshield. After you've installed the Thinkware app, press the wireless button on the dash cam. Go to the wireless settings of your phone and look for Thinkware. After your phone has connected to the Thinkware, you're going to choose the option Connect via Wi-Fi. When you are connected, you're going to click the button that says Live View. So from the live feed, you will be able to see the blue line will allow you to line up the camera with the center of your hood and the green line will allow you to line up the camera with the edge of your hood. This is so that you get the maximum viewpoints of the camera. Once it is aligned, remove the rest of the 3M film and hold it in place by pushing it with your hands against the windshield for at least 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, your camera should be able to stay on the windshield. And this is the end result of how you should have your dash cam affixed to your windshield. Also note the reasoning for not placing the dash cam too far up close to your rear view mirror mounting area is because of where the SD memory card is located. If it was too close to the mirror, you would not be able to insert or remove the memory card. So make sure you have enough clearance between the dash cam and the mounting area of the rear view mirror to where you can get to your SD memory card. Connect the OBD cable to the OBD port underneath the dash. This OBD port could be on the left side or right up underneath your steering wheel. In any case, whether the car is on or off, the OBD cable should light up when you connect it to the OBD port. Next, you want to try to take the excess cable and push it in between where the corner of the dash is and the rubber weather stripping. Push it all the way up into the A pillar. When you're pushing the cable between the edge of the dash and the rubber weather stripping, you can use your fingers or the best thing to do is to use a plastic trim tool. Do not use metal. These are available in stores, whether hardware or grocery stores and they also are available at bbmc.com or Amazon or wherever you buy your utilities from. When using a plastic pry tool, try to push back the rubber stripping between the frame of the door and the A-pillar that usually has the airbag. Make certain that you push the wire in between the rubber stripping and the A-pillar. You do not have to push it entirely on the other side. Just get it to where the wires are a little bit hidden and then make sure that you are able to flex the rubber stripping back into place. Once you've reached this section where the A pillar meets the headliner, use your pry tool to pry open the side curtain airbag just enough to where you can get the wire in behind the A pillar side curtain airbag cover. Continue to run the cable along the front, pushing it inside the headliner until you get to the rear view mirror. When you get to the rear view mirror, bring the connecting end of the cable down and plug it into the side of the dash cam. Your front dash cam is now installed. Now it is time to install the rear camera. 
Take note when installing the rear camera, it has a very lengthy cable. So if you have a SUV, I highly suggest that you start in the front first with the cable because you can always tuck it in the back hatch area. But if you have a car, start from the back first because you're gonna have so much cable left over, you're gonna have to probably tuck it someplace underneath the dash. So when installing the rear camera on an SUV, you're going to go ahead and connect the cable to the front camera and then have the cable pushed into the front headliner, run along the side, run it behind the A-pillar airbag cover and run along the top of the weather strip and along the driver's door. Once you get to the B-pillar, you're going to probably need to use your pry tool to tuck the cable in between the headliner and the B-pillar cover. When you reach the end of the B-pillar, use your pry tool to pry open the weather stripping and push the cable in between the weather stripping and the headliner. When you get to the C-pillar, this is a very tight area. It's very tough to get the cable in there. So use your pry tool, your fingers, and whatever force you need to use to get the cable in between the headliner and the airbag cover. Now if you look at the top left corner, you'll see a rubber grommet. This is where the wire could go. This is just an option. I didn't have the tool to get it to fish or feed it through to the other side because of the left and right angles of the rubber that happens with it. So I fed the cable through the back of the headliner and pulled back to where the stripping you see and fed the cable up between that and the frame of the vehicle. Here is a more detailed picture of the rubber grommet. As you can see, I bypassed it and brought the cable through the rather stripping and brought it up to the top of the hatch cover. Now, although this may look bad, the cable does not in any way get pinched by the hatch cover points that anchor it to the frame of the car. This is a totally different option if you cannot get the wire fed through the rubber grommet. This is what the end result would look like. Now on most SUVs, you should be able to take the hatch covering off. You wanna start at the corners by the window and easily pull at them to get the cover off. Don't force it, don't snatch it, or you'll rip the connecting anchor points off and then it won't be able to go back on. When you get your cable in through, you wanna put it through these holes that are up in the hatch area and you can push all your extra added cabling that you're not gonna use up in that hole. Once you have your cables tucked away, you can place the hatch covering back on to the back panel. And then you can attach your rear camera. Now here's a note, for SUVs, use the third brake light as a guide as to where to place your rear dash cam in the centermost portion of the rear window. Once you've made it to this point, if you have not yet connected your rear dash cam to your front dash cam, this would be the time to do that now. Congratulations, you have just installed a front and rear two channel dash cam, but you're not done. Now you have to download the app from Google Play or Apple Store in order to use the features and functionality and view your videos on your smartphone. Now when you're searching for the Thinkwear Dash Cam app, you're gonna come across about two or three of them. So the first one is for non-cloud-based dash cams, and the second one is for cloud base dash cams only. The third one is a dash cam viewer that you can download to your computer that will allow you to view the files of the SD memory card from the dash cam. From here, you can edit the videos if you need to in the video editing program. You can save them, send them an email, or keep them for yourself as an archive. Here is a sample shot of the rear camera. It's a little grainy, but that's because there's no light involved. Here is a screenshot 
of the phone app for the Q800 Pro. As you can see, there's the model name and the firmware version. The firmware version as of this date is current, version 1.02.03. So there's no need to update the firmware at this time. Here is a picture of the Samsung 64 gigabyte Pro Endurance memory card. These cards are specifically designed to work in a dash cam. Now I know the Q800 Pro comes with its own 32 gigabytes SD card. However, 64 gigabytes will give you more footage that you will be able to place onto the memory card. Here is a Thinkware PC Fuel program that you can download and install on your computer. And as you can see, version 1.4.3.9 is the current version of this program. You take your memory card out of the dash cam and use the included SD memory card reader place it into an available USB 3.0 drive on your computer and download the files onto the computer where you can use this program to view the files. From here, you can save them to a part of your computer where you can email them or upload them to a social media platform such as YouTube. Now if your PC Viewer app or your dash cam app that you downloaded and installed on your computer is causing you issues like it's crashing or it's freezing, that seems to happen a lot with these apps. I don't know why, but it seems to me from my experience that whenever the memory card gets hot or warm, that's when the app seems to act up. So alternatively, you can go to vlclan.org and you can download the VLC Media Player app to your computer and this works fine. You don't really need anything else. This will take care of playing back all your video files from your dash cam. If not somewhat even better than the PC Viewer app from your dash cam manufacturer. So if you have any problems whatsoever, download and use this app instead. I will leave a link to the website in the video description and that's it once you've been able to establish a connection to the camera using the app on your phone and you're able to view the footage of both the front and back you're good to go and all you have to do is just drive and be safe knowing that you have a silent witness on board your vehicle that can catch everything that it sees so I hope this helps you guys out. I will leave a link to the website blackboxmycar.com. I will also leave a link to thinkware.com and I will also leave a link to Amazon where you can purchase the 64 gigabyte memory card. So you all take care, be safe, peace out.